That's right. You have come to watch review number one triple zero. That's right. Review number one thousand here at DJ Brewtube. So you know I'm extra animated today. Hell yes. And today we have a very special beer for said review. That's right. It's one I've reviewed twice before, but the last time I reviewed it was in 2014. And what beer is that? It's one from Browder West Federling out of West Federling, Belgium. In the European Union, and it is, that's right, Trash Trappist West Wonderland 12. This comes, of course, from the St. Sixtus Abbey, and our monk friends produced this for us. That's right, it clocks in at 10.2% ABV and about 35 IBUs for the scale, which goes for this style, which is that of a quad for this year round serving, is between 25 and 38 IBUs. Now, <sighs> that's right, this has been a long time coming. We're getting to review number 1,000, and it's freaking awesome that all of you guys have subbed up, watched so many times. We're well over a million views, which I know for the big YouTube channels is nothing. But here in the corner of beer review world, I'm kind of happy with that. You know what? I've been kicking it. We're going on, I don't know, five, six years now doing DJ's BrewTube. And the fact that you, everybody has subbed up watch the videos, comments. I've done tons and tons of beer trades and met a lot of good friends in this beer community that is totally freaking awesome. You know what, guys? You totally rock. And um, I'm, I got so many shout outs I could give. This would make this like a 40 minute video. You guys know who are my good buddies out there on YouTube land and all the brew tube support that we get shout out to each and every one of you you guys know you got lots of love coming this way and you know usually this is a beer that i drink with my stunt drinker johnny as i mentioned before shout out to you my brother a huge shout out you know you're my my beer drinking wingman so without further ado i guess i'm starting you know uh, into this one how it all began by myself with a belgian style beer the first one that i drank was blue moon I guess we've improved since review number one in the quality of the liquid that's going to go into the glass here. On the back of the bottle, by the way, it's got some Latin, and translated it means this bottle helped to build the Abbey. So I'm kind of liking that. You know, it's, some people say, oh, the ones that came to the United States and the brick were different, and they tasted different. Bullshit. I've had other ones next to the brick before one bottles from the bricks that they put out anyway and they tasted almost exactly the same except one bottle was a little bit older so don't believe that stuff i've had them side by side if somebody else is telling you that that's a bunch of malarkey so let's pop the top on this bad boy you know how it goes get in the glass tell you what's up with the appearance and all that old shit hell yes boom big hiss off the top tons of cannon smoke and we have of course have the obsessively collectible westy 12 crown boom Last time I opened this, it was climbing up the neck on me as soon as I opened it. So maybe two more years are chilling out. Ooh, nice and clear, this go. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, it's got that crisp sort of Coca-Cola or soda-sounding head or maybe champagne-sounding head that's, like, fizzy and everything. Let's take a look at the appearance. Man, the dark fruits are blasting, like raisins blasting off the top of this beer. Wow. Like rum-soaked raisins from over here. Um, I didn't mix up the sediment on the bottom. I'm thinking about maybe saving that yeast and culturing it and doing a beer with it. Maybe, or I might just you know, throw it down my neck. That's another possibility. But, wow. Look at it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous garnet color coming through this chalice here. We've got a, I guess, a half finger head. If I roll this, I know we're going to get glass slicing. This is way less of carbonation than the last two times like you know head that I poured this super tightly packed bubble still a little so sudsy and they're khaki off-white but look at that delicious Westy 12 in the glass you know what I'm I've already smelled it but you know we got to dive in for the aroma wow big grape aroma wow like sweet like Concord grape juice almost raisins fig date wow not a hint of alcohol, man. The yeast esters are bumping in this beer. Mm, it smells like straight, like Welch's grape juice mixed with some fig and raisin, like the meaty inside of figs, raisin, and dates, like dried version, of course, um, of the, you know, figs and dates anyway. Mm. Mm, smells delicious. It's very vinous. And like I'm saying, from I remember this has been floral. It's been a little more yeasty. It's had funk in it at a time. There's a bit of spice in the yeast. That's gone at, I guess this is a 2012. So at time of recording, this is, I think, nearly five years old. Let's see. No, it's it's a little over, a little over four years old at time of recording now. But 
Mm, it smells delicious. Layers and layers of flavor. I'm diving in. Thanks a million guys for sticking with me for a thousand reviews. Here's to a thousand more and cheers. Wow. Mm. Wow. Awesome glass slicing. I was digressing. You, you expect that. But wow. Right. I keep saying wow. Yeah, that's the taste. Wow. But up front, very vinous. That, that aroma that I was telling you, that sort of like Concord grape type aroma, grape juice, transfers into the flavor. But it's big and dark fruity with dark cherries in there, raisins, mm, dried plums, figs. Wow. Delicious beer. Super smooth. There's a little tiny warming in the chest. That's it. No alcohol per se in the taste. Wow. Super smooth. Even though there wasn't a big head, there's still that zippy carbonation. It's got a palate drying finish. All the other times that I've had it, it's had that palate cleansing sort of drying finish, scrubbing bubbles thing going on in the background when you drink it. But man, such a delicious, balanced, just like well mannered. I don't get a hint of oxidation on this. This has been down the dungeon the whole time, 100% light abated, and it doesn't get much above, I think, in the summer at the highest, highest. We're like having like a real sweltering day above like 70 some in here, and it's generally in the 60s. So pretty much where it's supposed to be, a little higher, but mm, for celery. Mm. Delicious sipper, and it's like you don't almost don't want the glass to end. This is a great treat, you know. You see here on my shirt, it says, life is brutal. My kids got me this for Christmas, and that's what I'm feeling right now, man. Life is brutal. Brew tube is just a fun thing to do. You know, I've been branching off into whiskeys. I've always done, and, you know, and all their libations, tequilas. There's going to be more spirit reviews this year. I'll try to post some more soda reviews. i got a group of fans that like that. Of course, I'm always going to do mixed drinks because that harkens back to my bartender roots. John will be joining us, UBT. I might even do some homebrew action this year, but I use that as my pure hobby where I don't, like, record it and go deep depths into that. But as for the beer... This is just freaking delicious. It's cellar awesome. There's layers of flavor, super like vinous, and just the dark fruits at this point at four years old are really showing their stripes, man. Those cherries and raisins, mm. and I'm a sucker for dark fruits, so man, just delicious beer. It might be a little more intense as you get down to the bottom of the bottle. You got some of that yeast in there. You get the full impact of the flavors and your B vitamins for the day. So let's grade this beer. <sighs> Great beer. Hashtag Hundies. Boom. Done. Beer Advocate, same thing, hashtag Hundies, 100%, best you got, boom. And Untapped has given this 4.597 caps, which is about the highest echelon that you're going to get. That's definitely A-plus level. The last two times that I drank this back in, I think it was 2013 and 2014, both Johnny the Stunt Trigger and I gave this 100, boom, done, for different reasons as the flavors develop from new to now. And I'm going hashtag Hundies on this one as well. A lot of people, I guess, this beer doesn't get as much hype these days because there's so much variety out there, which is an awesome thing. And maybe the monks like that because the pressure is not on them as being the best beer in the world. But you know what? I'm glad I bought this brick and I helped them build the, you know, the monastery. They'll keep brewing beer because that's pretty freaking awesome. They make a really tasty drink. So, if you had Westy 12 of any year, let me know what you know, because I like the quote, quid pro quo and the back and forth. I also really like it when you do something important, which is thinking globally, drinking locally, and supporting the craft beer movement. We've been doing that since review number one. And as you can see, by the number of this video and all these freaking empty beer containers behind me, I've been doing my part. Have you been doing so? I'm sure you have, especially if you're watching this show. Uh, once again, I appreciate each and every one of you guys for watching. You know, I know I've been saying that a lot, but I really do sincerely appreciate you guys watching. So, to the next DJ's BrewTube, if you could, you know what you're, oh, I'm going to ask you to do now. You know, rate, comment, subscribe, especially if this is your first time with us. And what do you got to do? Smash that like button! Because that, along with only one bottle, that's all I need, of Browdy Russ Federlin's Westwardlin 12 or Westy 12, whichever you prefer. <laughs> that puts my happy face on. So, till next DJ Brew Tube, I got nothing but a big ass bunch of love. I'm going to take one more drink with you guys here. And you know what's coming now. <laughs>
me finishing this beer and a big beer.